I'm a simple man. I see a level 4 monster with 2000 attack or higher, and I'm immediately enticed to see how I can fit it into a deck. But that's not to say that they are all good, or have always been good, because the earliest adaptations of these low-level heavy hitters were, well, trash. So, let's dive into the dumpster and look at some bad, beefy boys. Our first two monsters come from Metal Raiders and are the first examples of this kind of monster in the game. Boar Soldier, a level 4 Earth Beast Warrior monster with 2000 attack and 500 defense, with the following effect. If this card is normal summoned, destroy it. Incredible. If your opponent controls one or more monsters, decrease the attack of this card by 1000. Saying that we're off to a bad start would be generous. During this early time in the game, the Beast Warrior type was one of the most under-supported monster types of the lot. And until Fire Fist, the type and this card would remain in obscurity. In its release window, the best cards to pair with it would have been Monster Reborn, because you literally can't summon it otherwise. Meaning, you would need to use it as some kind of discard fodder, which is arguably the best use of this card, but in turn is easily the worst target you could possibly procure cure for a monster reborn. Or if you're into big brain combos, you can normal summon this card, destroy it, then use monster reborn and cut out the need for something like card destruction. But aside from the hoops and circles you need to go through to put boar soldier on the field, the second effect makes me wonder why you'd even consider it. Exactly what I want in my beat stick is to be anything but a beat stick. At this point, we should be grateful that it doesn't burn you for a thousand if you special summon it. At least it can take credit as the worst search target for Witch of the Black Forest. Joined alongside our Porky Pugilist is Flash Assailant, a level 4 Dark Fiend monster with 2000 attack and defense. Despite looking concerningly human or like a warrior, this card was made exponentially more landfill worthy with the Fiend typing, which was also not well supported during this time. However, its effect isn't nearly as awful, but don't worry, it's still bad. Decrease the attack and defense of this card by 400 points for each card in your hand. So there's certainly a lot more means of making this card work in early versions of the game. Be that running a heavy back row deck so you can ensure easy emptying of your hand or something of the like. Unfortunately, this card absolutely packing in the front and the back makes it unsearchable. Moving into Labyrinth of Nightmare, frankly it's a nightmare looking at these cards, we have Nevea the Wicked. See if you can spot any similarities between this card and any previous card we've talked about. A level 4 Dark Fiend monster with 2000 attack and 800 defense with the following effect. If this card is normal summoned, destroy this card. If your opponent controls any monster, decrease the attack of this card by 200 points for each monster on your opponent's side of the field. Clearly, the effect of Boar Soldier was such a massive success with players that we needed to do it again. There's not really more I can say about the first effect that hasn't already been said about Boar Soldier, other than there were more means of discarding this card as well as recovering it, if you're ever so inclined to exchange your good cards for bad cards. But Mr. Pineapple, this card is clearly an improvement on Boar Soldier, so it's a good card. Well, if your brain is as smooth as a Manscaped commercial, that's certainly one way to look at it. They're selling you hopes and dreams, young duelist. At its time of release, the strongest level 4 normal monster was Gemini Elf at a staggering 1900 attack, which if your opponent controls that monster when you decide to go through the endeavor of special summoning this card, you're left helpless with a now 1800 attack monster. Hell, this monster can't even hope to compete with the forerunner of the strongest monster category in Mechanical Chaser. As we continue through this nightmarish labyrinth of card design, we meet not a friend, but a foe. At least that's what its name would imply. The Unfriendly Amazon, a level 4 warrior monster with 2000 attack and 1000 defense, with an effect that forces you to tribute a monster other than itself during each of your standby phases or it destroys itself. She's certainly no friend of mine. Just what everyone wanted to add to their Warrior's Triumph structure deck, a pseudo tribute monster. Let's compare this to something like Goblin Attack Force. While you have the drawback of switching your goblins to defense position after attacking, you aren't required to attack with it, meaning you can sit on it as a non-traditional wall monster. 
With the unfriendly Amazon who starts making demands from you after turn one, well, you still aren't required to attack with it, but if you're not making some kind of use with it after the first standby phase, I'll have to begin questioning your sanity. Let's push forward into Legacy of Darkness where we get to talk about a spirit monster. Oh boy. Susa Soldier, a level four Earth Thunder spirit monster with 2,000 attack and 1,600 defense. And outside of the standard spirit monster limitations, has the additional effect that halves any battle damage that you deal with this card. Well, I'll be honest, it's probably the least terrible one here, but this raises a bigger issue for me. While there's no real inherent downside to this card, as in it can still be over what it needs to be over, I question Konami in their decision to make several cards spanning the entirety of the game's life whose effect is exactly this. A big-bodied monster who can only inflict half battle damage, being a spirit monster, you're certainly not going to generate any otherworldly advantage by repeatedly normal summoning Susa Soldier and swinging for maybe 1,000 damage at the absolute most, 2,000 if you enter the locals instead of buying a lottery ticket. But a place that you would rarely find gambling is a cave. What you will find in a cave is perhaps a dragon. A cave dragon. Like the monster Cave Dragon from the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game by Konami. A level 4 wind dragon monster with 2,000 attack and 100 defense, and the following effect. Cannot be normal summoned while you control a monster. This card cannot declare an attack unless you control another dragon type monster. Summoning sickness. You gave it summoning sickness. You can't attack with it unless you control a dragon. But you can't summon it if you control said dragon. Magician's Force wasn't really known for the most outstanding cards in terms of meta relevance. The set did introduce some absolutely disgusting cards in the form of Magical Scientist, Kaiser Colosseum, Breaker the Magical Warrior, and even Luster Dragon, a 1900 attack vanilla that curb stomps half of this list. But this set also introduced a plethora of absolutely disgusting cards, in the sense that they make me sick just looking at them. And one of them makes this list and has a possible interaction with Breaker. Armor X, a level 4 light rock monster with 2400 attack and 1400 defense, with the following effect. This card cannot attack in the same turn it is normal summoned, flip summoned, or special summoned. During each of your and your opponent's standby phases, remove one spell counter on your side of the field. If you do not, destroy this card. You know what I've always wanted to do? Instead of use Breaker's single spell counter to destroy my opponent's face down magic cylinder, I'd rather give it up to a 2400 attack rock monster of all things, just so my opponent has a bigger target to flip said magic cylinder on. Even in a dedicated spell counter deck where you could generate more spell counters than you would ever know what to do with, the last thing you're going to expend spell counters on, plural, is a rock monster. I believe Charlie Brown said it best. I got a rock. Before I find myself in a state of mental crisis, let's look at the set Dark Crisis. Shadow Knight Archfiend is our sole entry from this set, and if I'm being honest, it puts my mind at ease because I know from the jump that Archfiends are abysmal, and seeing something good would be a genuine surprise. Nonetheless, Shadow Knight Archfiend is a level 4 wind fiend monster with 2000 attack and 1600 defense, and it's basically an exact copy of Susa Soldier but for the Archfiend archetype. Same stat spread, same in archetype limitations, with the additional effect of having battle damage that it inflicts. So, really the same arguments on Susa Soldier can be made for Shadow Knight, but Shadow Knight is somehow worse. Our last pick from today's trash can comes from the unique mini set tied to the Pyramid of Light movie. That being the exclusive pack, and that is Rare Metal Dragon. A level 4 dark dragon monster with 2400 attack and 1200 defense with the following effect. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. Why? But that's going to wrap up today's discussion guys. Let me know your thoughts. Are there any other series of absolutely terrible Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you'd like for me to cover? Drop a comment down below. If you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.